As long as there is blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield in hand, there shall stand the purple scythe. None shall escape our vengeance. Our vengeance shall be had upon all of these foes. Alfred, you can move into melee and engage. Arnold! Arnold, you get the honor of being the one to split this fool in half. Unleash the vengeance of the purple scythe on Hogarth the Weasel. Ah oh, yes, we took his head! This head flies free from his body. We'll keep that as some kind of memento, I think. Um, good work, Arnold. You have earned... Uh, uh, the next time we're at a tavern, the, the drinks are on me. This, this archer must be absolutely bricking it right now. Maybe we could offer him the opportunity to join our mercenary crew. Bandit marksman, will you join our crew? We are in need of an archer. We have only Torleaf. Who is... Okay, I'll take that as a no, shall I? You just you just stuck your your knife in Alfred, who was literally just offering you the chance to join our crew. Well, if you don't want to, that's fine. You can have his hatchet in return. <laughs> it's like forming up around him. Erhard, slightly bloody, moves in and just shanks the guy in the back with his spear. And that is the end of it. Our vengeance! Actually, it would be quite nice if he was kind of like a nemesis, if the weasel was like a nemesis who kept escaping us and drove the adventure forward for a little while and, and then we eventually tracked him down and slew him. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. But nonetheless, a, a very good introduction to the game and it provides you with a much more fluid way of being sort of getting to grips with all the different things that you can do in the game. So I have to say, uh, very impressed with that. And look, Torleaf has actually leveled up all the better. Um, mushrooms, can never have enough mushrooms. Medicinal supplies, also of course useful. Tools and supplies, 21 crowns. We've got a fresh bow, uh, more arrows, a couple of shields, four shields, plenty of shields, caps, Another shield, and an actual sword, a falchion, a curved sword, best suited for slashing and cutting unarmoured opponents. All good stuff, that can possibly replace the, um, the nunchucks, if we, if we get around to repairing it. And so we have completed our first, well we haven't quite completed our first quest, I guess we have to return after the battle. Hogarth the weasel lies dead in a pool of his own blood, skewered into a grotesque and panicked pose. He didn't weasel his way out of this one. You put a boot on his corpse and look to your men. For the company! For all the men who've fallen! Torleaf the Strong spits on the dead man's face. Let's take this bastard's head and get on back to Markdorf. It's not a cheerful move that the men are in, but it's a content one, like a blue horizon glowing before a furiously rising sun. The deed is done, and the company avenged. In this world, that's about as much closure as one can hope for. Time to get paid. Let's head back to Markdorf. We'll rest there with our crowns. Four hundred crowns along the way. You lead the way back to Markdorf as Torleaf the Strong picks up pace to catch up with you. Got a moment, Captain? You nod for him to speak his mind. The battle has left our armor and shields battered. The men have sustained some wounds. Perhaps we should make camp so that we can get everything in order and put our new bandages on. We'll be a lot quicker if we don't have to do it on the road. Every man maintains what equipment they carry. But you'll have to say if we should repair some of the plunder as well. Uh, need to have the tools for that, of course. Just we keep in mind that the camp's fire will be seen from afar, especially come night time. I'll keep that in mind. Should we do that? Where are we? There's a supply caravan. We're passing a supply caravan. We'll, um, we'll make camp here then. Why not? And we'll wait for dawn. 
Do we need to... Um, is time still passing when we're in this view? No, it seems to be paused. We should equip this, though. Who's... Uh, there you go. Arnie the Mountain. Have a sword. What is this sword good for? 35 to 40. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Take the sword. Um, now everybody's armed with actual weapons. I mean, Ingolf, to be fair, has a pitchfork, but it's sort of a kind of a weapon, isn't it? Um, does anybody need to put one of these hats on? I mean, maybe Ulbricht? Would you like to wear a full leather cap, Ulbricht? Or perhaps we should give this to Alfred. Alfred the Rat Catcher. Come on, Alfred. Have a full leather cap. There you go. It looks it looks good on you, man. It looks good. It, it brings out the colour of your beard. Um, and we've also got a, an Akaton cap, which we could give to Ingolf, maybe? Let's give it to Ingolf. There you go, Ingolf. You've got to make do with the pitchfork, so, you know, maybe having that is also a good thing. We could give somebody a bow. Does anybody have decent archery? 37... 39, 50, but he's already got a bow. 37, 38, 38, 37, 38. None of them are really good with a bow. They're probably better left as um, melee units. So we'll just leave it for now. We'll leave it in the stash. Maybe we'll sell it. Maybe we'll find someone who's good with a bow later on. But that's enough faffing. Let's get back on the road. It is morning of day three, and I'm eager to return to Markdorf and get paid my 400 crowns on completion. The return to Markdorf. The company returns to Markdorf as victors, their heads held much higher than the last time they visited. The Purple Scythe are not the size they once were, but it's still a force to be reckoned with, as Hogart the Weasel learned too late. You carry his head in a sack that you empty in front of Robert the Burgomeister's feet. As it rolls towards him, he takes a step back, momentarily startled, only to approach again with curiosity. So it's really him! Yes, yes, I'm rid of him! Robert, the Burgomeister, rubs his hands, his face turning into a grimace of cold satisfaction. Not speaking a word, his eyes glued to the weasel's frozen and slack-jawed gaze. He claps his hands for the servants to fetch the crowns and pay you as promised. You raise your voice to the men. As long as there is blood coursing through our veins, as long as we can hold sword and shield in hand, there shall stand the purple scythe. We've done it before, and we'll do it again. We'll make the company known throughout this land. The men cheer. Erhard puts his hand on your shoulder. You did well, Captain. Whether we travel from one village to the next and look for work, or head out to explore and plunder on our own, the men will follow you as brothers in battle. Yes! Come, my battle brothers! Let us make merry and drink to our victories in Markdorf, for there is much work to be done. Well, there we go. We have slain Hogart the Weasel. We have enacted our vengeance. It didn't take as long as it could have done, obviously. It turns out he was just round the corner. But then he was a mere weasel and was probably hiding, hoping that the purple scythe would move on and forget about him. Little did he know that we bear grudges. But now that is behind us, we must look to the future. How are we going to make our mark on this world? And perhaps more importantly, how are we going to earn our coin? Will we travel from town to town, taking contracts, working for whoever can pay us the most? Do we wish to have a moral compass, taking only those contracts that seem to be for the public good? Or should we turn bandit and raid the weak? There doesn't seem to be anything else that we can do here. What have we got? Provisions? We have 15 provisions. We use 15 provisions per day. Our 52 provisions will last three more days. That's not very much, is it? Three days? I mean, we can probably get quite far in three days, but we've got enough money to last 26 days. So, and we've got enough. We've got plenty of tools and supplies for repairs. We've got a reasonable amount of ammunition. We've got enough medicinal supplies. Three medicinal supplies and 15 hours will heal all of my men and we've got 26 so again we've got plenty of heals available to us there um we could do with hiring a couple more men i'd suppose there's it's just siegfried and leaf we've already rejected them for having just generally boring names uh and or appearances so we're gonna leave them there should we pick up a little bit of 
food whilst we're here. I suspect it'll be cheaper to buy food here, out in the village, where it's sort of produced, rather than in town. Okay, so I've bought a little bit of dried fruits here and some bread, just to vary up the diet. We don't want the men getting scurvy after all, that would be bad, that would be very bad. Um, and we've now got enough provisions for six days, which I think is ample for now. Um, let's leave here, and we'll leave Markdorf, and strike out. We could go up to Westerholtz here, or we could maybe go down to Adelstein. Now interestingly, Westerholtz doesn't seem to have any kind of allegiance, whereas Markdorf and Adelstein both have this flag next to them, look, if we move out of the way. And if we take a look in Factions and Relations, then we can find out about that. It was this flag here, the House Bartholin. Bartholin? Bartholin? Bartholin. The House Bartholin. He stands by his own powers. The noble House of Bartholin is a proud and unrelenting family with a long blood-stained history of conquest. Seated in their fortress of Grunfesti, Grunfesti, yes, Grunfesti. What a what a name for a fortress. Uh, anywhere that's got Festi in its name is, is not good. If it starts Grun, that's just bad all round. That's like doubly bad. Grunfesti. I don't think we want to ally ourselves with House uh, Bartholin if they're going to live in uh, in Grunfesti fortress. They take with arms what they consider theirs by right. An ancestral feud with House Rumolt provides never-ending reasons to keep both hate in their hearts and ore smelters burning. Not only that, but Ruhumalt? Ruhumalt. I, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, perhaps one of my fine German viewers can inform me as to the correct, pr correct pronunciation of that kind of spelling. Um, we actually know these people. Look, they've got um, this kind of stag horn thing, stag um, antlers. House Ruhomolts, let us be viewed by our actions. Wealth is sought by many, but the highly reputable traders of House Ruhomolts are the best when it comes to striking profitable bargains. Bound by ancestral ties to the renown of their forefathers, they uphold honesty and integrity as their family values. Well, I, I like the sound of them, frankly, more than House Bartholin, although I suppose it depends what manner of mercenary companies we end up being. Um, House Perowinger, I like that name the best. Perowinger, House Perowinger, to live without a wish concealed. Trading and haggling can be just as fierce as fighting a war, and the House of Perowinger is a true master of cunning bargains. Rumour has it that many a profitable deal made by House Perowinger is not only based on honest trading, but also bribery, extortion, and deception. The family resides in the pompous region capital of Strachberg, but despite their unmeasurable riches, they are known to be notoriously close-fisted. Um, interesting. Perhaps because of the way that I was reading them out, could these be, like, the noble family that our very own, uh, chap? What was he called again? Um... Here, Torleaf, Torleaf the Strong. He could well come from that family, couldn't he? Um, perhaps he is a bit of an outcast, so maybe we should avoid visiting them for the time being. And of course, Markdorf is just where we were, which doesn't really get us very far, does it? And we've decided that we're probably going to avoid these people for the time being. Uh, down here, these people might be interesting to go and visit. They're kind of a bit of a way. We'd have to cross... We'd have to cross the mountains, but that's entirely doable. They've also got somewhere, look, far up here in the north, in the snowy north. I guess over here is sort of like the shrouded region, the unknown lands. I don't know what's there, presumably something very exciting. Out here is the known world and all of the known lands of the three great powers uh, who we have previously looked in on. Um, time is continuing to pass and we're not actually doing anything. We're just eating supplies and hanging out just outside Markdorf. Um, I could... I could pause it by pressing space. I probably should have done that whilst I was, you know, faffing about like this. Uh, but there we go. Fine. Should we head up to Westerholtz? Because it's nearby and it's a bigger town and there may be a contract or something that we can do there. Um, and we may find out more and interesting rumours and such. So let's do it. We're going to go up to Westerholtz. I know we've been there before, but you know, that's fine. We'll travel by night. <gasps> During camp. During a short rest, your men manage to catch a man that tried to make off with some of your supplies. His clothes are but rags, and he looks more skeleton than man. What are you going to do with him? Give that poor guy some food and water. Give him a good beating. Put him, 
put him to the sword. I thought that was going to be put a sword in his hand. I thought, come join us, my friend. Become, like, you're clearly, you've fallen on hard times, and we need men, so we could get a free man. A free man would be great. But no, apparently, uh, we can't do that. You know what? I'm feeling good after recently having, you know, enacted my vengeance on Hobart the Weasel. And uh, this guy just seems like he's been a bit down on his luck. And we know what that's like, right? We were recently down on our luck too. So I'm going to give that poor guy some food and water. Feeling bad for the feeble man, you decide to give him some water and food. He snatches the meal away from you and drives his famished face into it. The thief thanks you between every bite. We've lost some mushrooms. Oh, we gave him some mushrooms. Not everyone will be this lenient. It's true. We are... We were kind to him then. We could have given him a beating. We could have stuck a sword through him. I was kind of hoping that maybe if I fed him, he might sort of join us and we get a free man. Would have been a nice touch. But no, apparently he was too scrawny and too much of a thief to, uh, to dare to join the mighty Purple Scythe Mercenary Company. We've made it to Westerholtz. However, as the sun has come up... And we have contracts available here, so if you're in a town or a settlement that has contracts available, you'll see this little icon. Um, so, should we just take a contract? Let's just take a contract. Negotiations. A man approaches from the side of the road. He's dressed in a peasant's garb, yet is guarded by two well-armed men. He announces himself as a councilman in the employ of Sigmar the Councilman, a local leader of Westerholtz. You are asked to take audience with the man. I'm all ears. Sigmar, the councilman, pours himself a drink, stares at the cup, and pours himself some more. He seems to drain it in one gulp, before belching his news. Bandits killed Ingolf and his whole family. Can you believe that? I know you don't know who they are, but they were a well-liked family in these parts. I'm sure you can already imagine, but I want these bandits done with. I spent half my men just finding their camp. Now I'm ready to spend ha some of my crowns for you to go and kill them. Are you interested? D were you about to say half your crowns? How many crowns do you have? I am interested, but what is Westerholz prepared to pay for their safety? Rest assured, what I'm offering you now is a fine prize for your work. You'll get 170 crowns in advance and another 290 when the job is done. Um, I want more in advance. I want more on completion. I want more on completion. It doesn't... Uh, I, I just got paid 400 crowns for killing some guy called the Weasel, right? I mean, you just spent half your men trying to find this guy. It sounds kind of dangerous. You'll get 140 crowns in advance and another 340 when the job is done. He's taken. A, he takes a deep breath first. You'll get 140 crowns in advance and another 340 when the job is done. Um, should we ask for more in advance as well? Have you not heard of the Purple Scythe Mercenary Company? We're like, possibly the most incredible mercenary company ever to have wandered through this particular town. And uh, and I think we should we should be given more in advance. Fair. Uh, would you accept this instead? You receive 200 crowns in advance and another 300 when the job is done. 300, 500, all right, fine, I accept your offer. The contract you negotiated is as follows. Do you agree to the terms? Drive off bandits at dead men fort. Get 200 crowns in advance and 300 on completion. I accept this contract. Very well. So we've got 1,683 crowns in the bank. Um, should we see if there's anyone else that we want to hire here? It's probably the set. Oh, look. Vald Valdemar. Valdemar's got a bow. We could do with another archer. And Ulfert, who looks... Look, do you remember? Do you remember our witch hunter from before? This guy looks distinctly similar. He's cost 920 to hire, which is big, and he's 9 a day. This guy's only 425 to hire and only 8 a day. Um, let's see if their backstories will inform us better. With a grumbling stomach, Valdemar took to the woods to hunt game with bow and spear. Hailing from Westerholz, Valdemir was, as a poacher, the hunter and the hunted. Tired of working so hard just to put food on the table, buying a meal with a sellsword's pay just seems so much easier in his mind. 
possibly it is, Valdemar, and you do have one of these great tashes that we are so, like, fond of in the mercenary company. On the other hand, Ulfrecht has a witch hunter's hat and a crossbow, which is pretty cool. Being a quiet and grim man, Ulfrecht has the tendency to make other people feel uncomfortable around him, even afraid. A witch hunter, he calls himself. He actually is a witch hunter. And he claims to have seen horrors from beyond that would drive a lesser man insane. It seems that whatever his mission was is now accomplished, and so Ulfrecht offers his services as a mercenary. Oh, I, I'm tempted to take them both, but I don't think we can really afford them both. That would almost wipe us out. We'd have to go and complete the mission, like, in no time at all. Otherwise, we'd run out of cash, which wouldn't be good. On the plus side, I think both can be just taken as they are. We don't need to worry about equipping them, because this guy comes with a bow, and this guy comes with a crossbow. 900. I mean, that's so much of our cash. It's so much of our cash. But he is a witch hunter. We're going to go with Valdemar. We're I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a skinflint. It's like, we just don't have the cash at the moment. Maybe we'll hire Ulfra on our return with our sort of like, with our extra earnings and stuff. Um, but for now, we're going to hire Valdemar. Plus, I kind of, I like the cut of his jib a bit more, you know? He's, um, we can't actually look at his stats, can we? We just have to take it on like, whatever. Whatever the backstory is and what he looks like and what his costs are. Um, and hope that he's actually worth it when we finally get him through the door. Alright, Valdemar! You're hired. Excellent! A fine addition to the mercenary company and we now have a full nine men of twelve. It'll be nice to get up to that twelve, but it's gonna have to wait, I suspect. We're gonna need a little bit more cash before we get to that point. Both for recruitment purposes and, of course, to be able to pay them as well their daily wages. But I'm sure we'll get there soon. In the meantime, we have work to do. We have bandits to hunt. For we must make our way to Dead Men Fort. Doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. It's very sad, but these are human troubles, surely. I'm in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight, and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Double? Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Well, seeing as you are so nicely, and indeed offered double the tithe. You did say double, right? Chapter 1. Only the sun has stopped. <laughs>